So, Dane, you remember when we talked about Brittany Griner? Yes. I'm, I'm so glad you, I'm so glad that we talked about that. Um, actually um, got some compliments some, from some black women organizations were like, thank you for covering it. People really weren't covering it. And if they weren't, they really weren't pointing out some of the obvious things. But I thought it was sad irony that uh, this week, this, yeah, this week, Sports Illustrated released its annual swimsuit issue, uh, and it featured five WNBA um, players. Let's embark on the Ark Republic to hear current news that's published. More than gossip and chatter, covering current affairs that matter. We talk issues with professional views, all keeping you in queue. We wanted a higher vibe for these days and times to free the voices and minds. Reporting the sign of the times so all can build. Let's shine. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Sue Bird Taylor Taylor Cool Agumike, Agumike, Neka, sorry, Neka, yep, um, Neka Agumike, Agumike. Yep. Didi Richards, uh, and Brianna Stewart. Uh, and they were in this picturesque Virgin Islands, um, uh, you know, uh, what do you call this tropical mood? And it was, you know, so sensuous and so, and so sexy and, and so on and so forth. But meanwhile, Brittany Griner is still, is now has still an, ex, sorry, right now, Brittany Griner is an extended stay in a Russian jail somewhere, mm -hmm. right? And I, I, I'm really disturbed and not, I'm not, this is not implicating the players, but the institution of WNBA about how they are not advocating more, you know, for Brittany Griner. And even though the Sports Illustrated issue, it's cute. No, I mean, this is, it, it's a beautiful cover. I, and we all know, come on, let's keep it a buck. We all know that a significant number of WNBA players are, LG, are in the LGBTQ community. Um, and I think the, the heteronormativity lean, hmm, um, I don't know. I mean, I, them trying to sexify the WNBA at a time like this or with all these political things. I have a lot on my mind, but let me listen to what you've got to say about it. Um, I may be biased because I thought the shoot looked amazing. No, I said it looked amazing. No, <laughs> yeah, I said but, it. I mean, I said they but, look good. But I like was like, said, oh, I want dead body. I want dead body. <laughs> I got to clean up a gut. I, all that. No, <laughs> word, word is blunt. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an athlete. So it's, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's dope. Like when I see athletes presented, my hair thing fell off. When I see athletes presented and in, 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 I think it's dope. Okay, let me let you go on. Be quiet. Um, I, think it, I think they look dope, but well, let's talk about the main thing. The WNBA has an image problem. A huge image problem. And mm -hmm. they've been trying to figure out how to fix this problem for a better part of 15, 20 years now. And it's not, it's not just, a, it's an image problem compounded by the environment of a regular WNBA game. I'm going to keep it a buck, okay? I don't know what WNBA games look like because I haven't gone to one in a very, very long time because when I was covering, I remember the, the sports editor at the LA Sentinel at the time was a woman, I forgot her name. She was hella cool. And so she, sometimes, you know, I would go, you know, to the games, um, men's and women's. Well, I stopped going to the women's games because it was a meat market. It was, I preferred to go to the men's games because I could go sit at the press area, the, the, whatever, get a couple of whatever, 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 and be out. The WNBA, I have, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it's not even just like, hey, shorty. I mean, the most vulgarist <laughs> propositions as I, it was like as if I was walking down a um what do you call that what was that plank they used to have you know what I'm saying like <laughs> yeah. walk, I mean it was it was like it was humiliating you know what I mean like even if I you know what I'm saying even if I did bang like that I don't want to be approached like I'm a piece of meat yeah and that's yeah. what a lot of people were complaining about that I don't know I don't know what the WNBA they were like. but again so I took my daughter I think I want to say three seasons ago it was before the pandemic and it was a little more family friendly, but it was still a lot of what you're talking about. Mm. And, and, it, and when I say they have an image problem, I think at this time they were trying to switch it 
to more family friendly. Like they mm-hmm. were giving tickets to families at a discount rate. Like I seen they were trying to market to families. Now I think they're trying to go the opposite. Like, like how can we market to the NBA fans or right, the sexify the girls? Let's get them sexied up. You know what I mean? And I will say in sports groups, a lot of the guys are like, I see who the spark sign. We go into the games this season. <laughs> I, Men are pigs. Oh my God. <laughs> so I will say it might work. They like, oh, Liz Cambridge just signed here. Uh, we got uh, Tia Cooper was here. They had Liz, Tia Cooper, um, Jordan Canada. Shout out to Jordan Canada. And I was like, they do have a really, now they have a more, it's crazy because I could tell that it was done specifically. They have a mm-hmm. very pretty feminine team. That's very mm-hmm. good though. They're very skilled. They can play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I know it was done on purpose marketing. Like they're trying to make it like, oh, how can we make the sparks like the female Lakers? Because mm-hmm. as quiet as it's kept, magic made the Lakers sexy back in the day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. they were trying to figure out how to do that formula. So I think that's what you're seeing with this Sports Illustrated thing. And you're seeing with some more the, the commercials that they're doing and some of the marketing they're doing. They're getting the girls a little dolled up or they're getting the more um, film looking women and mm-hmm. putting them out front in a lot of the marketing pieces. So I think they're trying to, I think what it is is just bad because they're really just trying to figure out how to market their product and they haven't found a way yet. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I might be dinged for this, and I'm trying not to, you know, for forecast what happens. Like I said, I am an athlete. I went to college athletics as a, um, you know, as a softball player. But while I was at Washington Prep High School, if you're from LA, you know the prep. And I played basketball for two years. I was, um, um, I played uh, in what do you call it? The J, what do you call it? Junior the JV, JV. I played university. university and my uh, freshman year was Lisa Leslie's senior year uh, on the varsity. So, I mean, so I've seen talent. I've been in those environments and for years I, I've been, I've been, I was in sports my whole of life, you know? So I've seen how even, um, even it even has changed. And even me having younger sisters, we were all, my father, it wasn't a question. You had to participate in sports because participating in sports, as we all know, or some kind of group activity facilitates skills, right? Um, So we all were in sports. And by the time my sister, who's six years younger than I, who's the the next sibling, the environment of of girls' sports changed. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, she complained that there was even a um, an environment where uh, the LGBTQ um, lifestyle uh, was highly promoted and even kind of like they, you know what I'm saying? They, they can't kind of bullish. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, like there know. was a there was a WNBA player who actually came out a couple of years ago, did a big oh. story. And she was talking about how she kind of was shamed for being straight. She was like, I was one of the only straight young ladies in my locker room. And I kind of got bullied for being straight or like they would try to pressure me into gay activity. Like, so it's, it's definitely been a thing and it's a thing that's been talked about. And I think that also has something to do with the change in image. Cause once that came out, that's when I started to see kind of the switch in imagery from the WNBA. And, and I want to ask you this Tobe, because we know the biggest reason that they always trying to figure out how to change the marketing is because they're trying to sell tickets. Mm-hmm. Now, like you said, we went to Washington. We got to see Sheree Sampson play, Kishana mm-hmm. Ledet. We got Lockhart. Deetra Lockhart. Mm-hmm. Like Sharice ball- Lockhart, yeah. Ballers. 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 Sometimes, and then you have Mrs. Rousseau, who I think is in the W. Uh, she Julie was in Rousseau. WH. Julie Rousseau was the first mm-hmm. Sparks coach. Wow, okay. She was the first Sparks WNBA coach. Uh-huh coming straight, you know, coming fresh from Washington into the WNBA. So she was an amazing coach then. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, because at a time, you have the same amount of people at a girls game that you would at a a boys varsity Mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, the WNBA can't capture that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even in college, if you watch college basketball, you watch the college final four, those games are packed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they can't make that connection? At a professional level, 
Well, you know what? That's a that's an excellent point. I wanted to let me let me let me say this when it comes to I want to finish this point and then I'm going to to answer it because I um this is what happens when things become corporatized and you don't have, I think the people really articulate what things should look like. But um I think the WNBA and what I experienced then was a symptom of society that did not have a space for black women in particular uh -huh. uh, spaces for them to explore and be social in a public setting as being members of the LGBTQ plus right mm -hmm. now this was you know that's what it's called so that's what the, the WNBA represented one of the few places where publicly you could you could be out, you could court, you could catch, you know, and everything like that. Right. So, so, so I, I want to, I want to say that back to, to answering your point, why can't the WNBA uh, capture it is because um, I think that the, well, look, hmm. most people who buy basketball tickets are not our community members. And I think that, that because mainstream culture does not in my opinion embrace bold female athletics the way that black community because being an athlete in a black community was a part of a in my opinion part of a um like a revered population like you know what i mean if you were in high right. school if you were in some type of auxiliary sport and you were like meeting the president or you were going to another state to compete whatever that was you were highly celebrated right. be it you were a boy or a girl um because you knew that translated into you either going to school or getting a better job and so on and so forth but at, i always i will always i will always say this and we talked about this too as well as much as black communities get flat i think they get flat for be you know like oh they're so homophobic and the black community doesn't embrace by far the black community been embracing lgbtq more so than mainstream culture right um so i i think that wnba has not taken a note of the communities that these women are coming from and how to create a culture and environment of that they do also have to i mean this is another thing i mean um and, and as much as they're lgbtq populations there's hetero heteronormative people too yeah you gotta have absolutely. a platform for both that's yeah. that's probably the, their, their, their the issue you know what i'm saying is not like how do we then have a platform in a, an environment um for, for for both and also marketing dollars don't go into the WNBA like they they no do. not at all the women need to be paid more far more so they're not playing in Europe and yep. being detained <laughs> yep. um you know um uh, as well there need there needs to be in my opinion um um another thing I learned especially because I work with black farmers there are several WNBA members who are now black farmers I don't oh. think they're yeah I, there's this one chick who used to play for the I want to say the was it for Arizona, either for Arizona's or Washington's game, who's now a farmer in Phoenix? Uh, I, I don't think people highlight the work that they do outside of um, um, the WNBA. Um, I think, though, you do need some, um, um, how do I want to say, just basically more, more marketing resources and consultants that are rooted in these communities can offer much more whatever and then this is another thing that the nba does i'm sorry i can go on and on the no, nba yeah. be having bomb ass halftime shows yeah you know what i'm saying there's it's a whole production it's not just the game it's a whole production the last time i went to a WNBA game it was my mother loves WNBA games my brother does too i do too you know what i'm saying you know and and from what i understand they've gotten they've gotten better but there could it could be much better if there's just more resources um you know what i mean that are placed into it cuz you never really hear about WNBA games outside of the sports channels yeah you yeah. know what i'm saying like if you're not like a sport i'm not a sports head like that no more I'm, right so they so, so basically they're not doing a good job reaching the casual fans like the nba does 
Right, right, right. Because the tickets in WA from what I, WNBA from what I remember are very reasonable. They're far more reasonable uh, than the NBA. Uh, yeah, yeah, than the NBA. So marketing, reaching the people, what are these women doing outside? Pay the women more. Uh, maybe I should start with pay, the, pay them more. Um, pay them more, provide a platform that is both LGBTQ and heteronormative friendly. Um, and whatever else is in between and outside of that. Um, and uh, I think that's a great answer, though. That's a great answer to my question. OK, and let me shut up. I could I could go on and on. I actually reached out. I know somebody who worked for the WNBA uh, marketing. And when I tell you this person left because they were based in a predominantly black city, it's a black person, black woman, did not want to work in that area because it was too black for them. Oh, wow. So if you have this type of person, <laughs> this is like the corporatization that I'm talking about. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, and they hella, and the girls are hella cool. You know what I'm saying? Right, they, right, they're right. Mad, mad hella cool. Like I don't, yeah, so yeah. But um, we'll, we'll see. Thank you so much for tuning in to Arc Republic. If you like what you see and you like what you hear, you can actually keep this mothership going. How? You can make a tax-deductible donation in several ways. One, cash app us at Arc Republic Media. And you can also go on our website, arcrepublic.com forward slash donate. As well, you can also donate to our fiscal sponsor and our sister organization, at Black Farmers Index, that is Cash App, or also go onto their website, blackfarmersindex.com. We are two Black women owned media organizations who share our profits so folk can thrive. Let's get on the political part of Sports Illustrated thing. Brittany Griner. Yes. Um, um, I spoke to this incident, uh, this uh, to uh, Sharice. Her wife uh, is about to have a baby. Uh, she was supposed to be let out in May, but they said that they're extending her detention for at least a month. Uh, nonetheless, it has very little kind of um, um, conversation about what is the U.S. going to do or doing uh, in order to see if she gets out or can they help getting out. Getting yeah, because out. at this point, it's clear she's being used as a political pawn because they want to trade her for uh, someone out here. Uh, they want to trade her for someone that was arrested out here. Ah, okay. Yeah. So um, I'm just keeping my eye because I don't know what they have decided. I don't know if they're going to make the trade. I don't know, you know, but they, Biden finally came out and said she's being wrongly detained. He finally said something. Okay. So, yeah, exactly. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what that means from here. Um. So, yeah. So, okay. So that's the government still does not, in my opinion, is answering the question is why is, isn't the WNBA, we, it's tears to this, not voicing their opinion? Um, again, like I said, I think there's a reason, like what we talked about back then, um, and I think because of the political ramifications, and I think also the WNBA, because just the lack of power they have, like they would need the NBA to do it. You mm. know what I mean? They would need mm -hmm. the NBA because... The WNBA speaking out about it, I don't think it's going to move the needle the way it needs to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If anything, it'll agitate more than help. Do you think that they that there's this sentiment that if the WNBA, the NBA come out and rally around this issue, it would give Russia more brokering power? Absolutely. Absolutely. But there, it's a double-edged sword, in my opinion, because not talking about her makes it irrelevant, makes yeah. her irrelevant. No, it is. It is a double edged story. But again, I think everybody coming out rallying around her, I think that makes her a bigger, um, a bigger political pawn for them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is what we see. Like, because I thought that's what it was then. I said, I think they're trying to use it for a political right. pawn. That's what you said. Mm -hmm. And and now that I see that they're trying to make a trade for some dude that we have over here, I think they're like, trying to like hey let's not make too much noise because then they'll know they have some leverage but let me tell you the stupidity of that excuse me Every, i mean not everybody knows but it's already out like people already yeah. know that she's being held like there there is no hush hush yeah 
yeah. uh, at this point. I don't want to say necessarily, I, I, that's a very harsh word in terms of stupidity. This, this, this issue really, it really, really irks me. I believe that it could have been squashed a long time ago um, if people actually gave more of a damn about a black woman, um, if this was a white woman, if this was a white woman, I don't, I don't even have to say anything else. I don't disagree with you okay? at if, all. You know, um, like we said, it, <laughs> honestly, even if it was, if it was a more, uh, a feminine black woman, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, honestly, mm-hmm. I, right. I, I, I think it would, it would be more noise would be being made. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that's the second part. The third part of the question and this is the um, this is the flaw, I guess, to what I was saying earlier when I said, you know, our community like celebrates female male athletes. Why isn't the community not saying anything? So that's the part that's interesting, and I can't speak to it because I have no clue, no idea, and I wish I knew because they are have been very quiet as well. You know, and I mean, where's where's where where is Reverend Al Sharpton? Where right. is uh, Benjamin Crump and his lawsuit self? Where you know what I'm saying? Where is uh, what is this dude? Uh, um, I forgot the names. Uh, you know, all of these merit uh, and all of these. Uh, where's Tamika Mallory and yeah. uh, my song? Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> oh, hold up for a minute. Where's Patrice Colors? Yeah. Where is where is uh um so Opal Opal Tometi? I'm sorry, Ayo. She goes by the name of Ayo now. Ayo Tometi, Alicia Garza, where you at? Hoo hoo. No, I'm serious. I'm, I'm I know I'm being whatever, but for real, for real though. Yeah. Like like yeah. this. If you if, if Black Lives Matter, is truly about transforming the lives, uh, um, centering the lives of trans men and women, the LGBT community. This is a perfect platform to, to platform bring those together to use, right yep and i know Brittany griner put in some work in terms of you know black lives matter right um you know no but 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 i i i, I this is problematic the, the 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 this is a serious political issue a black woman is at the center of it and at the same time is the pawn of it uh um and i said well black women we can't get out of shit for nothing god <laughs> right. even when we're not trying to get into something we are put into it somewhere i think this is very interesting so what i there there has been i'm i'm gonna check back um some um somebody from uh a, what i would call a very respectable and a very bounded black feminist organization uh, did say that they were interested in coming on and talking about what does it look like for them. But, you know, I'm about, you know, free Brittany Griner, for real. Like, this this is madness. It's ridiculous. Yo, this is this is absolute madness. Okay, your last thoughts on this. Um, well, oh, my what? last thoughts. Oh, go ahead. What? I'm sorry. Did you, did you read? <laughs> talking about Black Lives Matter, just a side note. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. All right. What's we'll t- what yep. we're talking about just recently, it came out that the, the tax information in terms of how the money was spent. I didn't even know Patrice Colors had a had a child, had a baby daddy. I did didn't not either. did not know that, right? No idea. Almost a million dollars to your baby daddy. Okay. <laughs> I got so much ish to say about that on the Listen, other side, but I'm exactly. not gonna say it because I will be called that'd a be a whole nother show. That'd be a whole nother mm-hmm. show. So you got two million to your best friend, almost a milli to your to baby, the baby daddy. daddy. And brother, and your brother got half a million to, or something. Yeah, Chuck to your brother. And you were having soirees in the six million in the it was a six million, six million dollar, dollar home yeah. that you said that it was just for security and to provide shelter. And then you know, you get on the social medias and it's crying because when Candace <laughs> Owens is loony ass shows up to your your house a whole it, bunch of mess just all together it, just yeah and she's like, just i a, want to feel and candace owens <laughs> i'm not harassing i was like this you can't make this uh, oh lord I'm you can't you can't we have work to do so on that note brother dame i will be talking to you later thank you for joining me i know you got a million and one jobs to do because that hair is looking shot <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me it was good always good to check in and be on the check-in checking in yes sir